Hey everyone, welcome back to CyberCK TV. So last week we talked about some of the filters and we saw VB script, JavaScript filter, we analyzed the rule set, etc. Now this week we are going to use one of the technique to bypass those rule set and execute malicious XSS payload. Now one weakness that XSS filter has is it only uh, like you know categorize the user input in trusted versus untrusted input or untrusted data. Now how it does that is if you are as an attacker put some malicious javascript and it has uh, like you know immediate execution uh, let's say in the user's browser then those are untrusted data and has to like you know uh, maybe altered or, or maybe apply some hash or encoding whatever to prevent malicious execution on the user's browser but however if you put something uh, through the access filter and if that is not going to be immediately executed then that particular malicious payload is still marked as trusted and going forward in any subsequent request even if access filter uh, like you know encounters that input it will it will be like you know already marked as trusted so it will not uh, go through the filter again so that's that's one of the weakness now if you're not sure uh, if you still don't understand don't worry we'll we'll, we'll see an example uh, in a in a just a second so uh, so here like you know as you can see on the screen so request one let's say uh, this is the request from the uh, user or attacker which has some access payload and the response one will not contain any part of that uh, payload which was given so now in this case xss will be marked as trusted because uh, of course this, there is nothing uh, user will be like you know uh, affected by by using this malicious payload however if the same payload then invoked in the subsequent request in the second request and because this xss is already marked as trusted it will not go through the xss filter or anti xss filter it will it will like you know pretty much xss filter will bypass that and then this will cause or or exploit at the user's browser so that is what it is now don't worry if it's still like you know uh, somewhat confusing to you i will uh, let's let's go through a like you know simple example let's take a like you know a step by step example and that way i probably you will be a bit better understand so all right so let's take an example uh, there is a there is a uh, like you know website uh, which has iframe functionality and there is a payload called uh, parameter called xss and whatever you put in that uh, in that parameter as a value it gets loaded into the src attribute as you can see here and that will be like you know what are the injection you have done here so for example here uh, let's say there is a there is a page attacker has created uh, with the malicious javascript so it will it will go here and load it into the iframe and then whenever it's loaded it will be some tags whatever the uh, javascript or injection which was given in the iframe it will load up here and then uh, whatever the text it is now this one here as you can see the attacker is giving a payload directly into the xss parameter which is being loaded in the iframe and which is being displayed on the user's browser so let's assume uh, a user makes like you no know, direct request uh, to this particular payload where it says script src http attacker.evil.js now when it comes to the ie filter it will see okay this javascript is directly going to be executed in the user's context or in the user's browser so we better off mark this as untrusted and we have to filter it so then the request will turn into like you know alter by the ie access filter anti access filter and it will prevent the malicious impact to the browser now going back to our earlier example even if the request is like you know part of the iframe so called iframe right so here if you see get vulnerable iframe so that's the page which is uh, injecting the data and access parameter is the one which is vulnerable to cross site scripting and here is the injection which will load up into the iframe so if you see here in the src it says http attacker evil.js uh, if you like decode this one you'll be able to uh, see that that's the same thing but yeah so when uh, ie actually receives this in this example as well as the one that we saw earlier right so here as well these two are going to be directly executed uh, in the user's context so that's why this response cannot be uh, trusted and that's why uh, access filter will will uh, will protect the user by altering the response which is going to be in the html 
So that's how the filter is going to protect the user's browser. But now the question is, how are we going to bypass this? Uh, that's like, you know, uh, our, our, as an attacker, we have examined these filters and everything. So one, one weakness we saw that it only uh, blocks or, or like, you know, uh, untrusted data if it's going to be executed in the subsequent request. If it's not, then the, even the malicious payload will be marked as safe and then we can execute our payload. Now the bypass technique we are going to use is our old friend uh, encoding. Uh, so we are going to use uh, decimal encoding. Uh, you can also try with the hexadecimal. So when uh, usually browser like you know receives the encoded char characters such as decimal or in hexadecimal, usually before it is being sent to the uh, user's browser, they decode it. Let's say if you send the hexadecimal or decimal character, it will decode it and then uh, give it to the user. Now this alone uh, might or might not work for us because of course uh, when the uh, it goes to the IE filter, it will still analyze, oh, if this is going to be executed immediately, then this is untrusted and let me alter this. But fortunate thing for us as an attacker is, if you were to send a decimal or hexadecimal uh, and a parameter or a payload into the request, which is being also returned in the response, let's say your 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 input or like you know decimal value is being returned in the response, and which is going to be used in the subsequent request. So in our example, if someone were to click on the iframe, so if that's going to be used in the subsequent request, then the it will not send the decimal value, but instead it will be sent as a decoded value. So instead of sending like, you know, pound, whatever the decimal value of it is, instead it will be sent as a script alert script. So that's the like, you know, a uh, fortunate thing or, or how really the browser operates. And, and that's how we can, we can use this technique to actually bypass this uh, uh, access filter. So what we need to do uh, is to fool the Internet Explorer anti access filter we need to find a character or we need to uh, like you know encode the character in such a way then when it decoded it's decoded in the decimal uh, the exact character we want so for example if you want to send script then we send uh, the equivalent encoded character which will be sent in the uh, decimal value and then when it's used in the subsequent request it will be it will be it will go in the plain text like you know as in like uh, a simple value which anyone can uh, like a script alert script and because this value was already marked as trusted and browser did not understand and that's how we will be able to bypass this technique I'm sure you must be confused with all these things. So let's get into the example so you can easily understand how this is actually is going to work. So suppose uh, same page, right? So here there is an HTTP vulnerable iframe inject and access parameter is the one where instead of sending as a URL encoded or a, like, you know, a like straight up payload, what we are doing here is we are actually encoding with the decimal. Now here, how it's going to reflect so as you can see here, iframe SRC, HTTP vulnerable page, look at the vulnerable parameter. So this is not the URL encoding or uh, the same type of encoding which uh, we were sending our payload earlier. So Internet Explorer's anti access filter does not see either of those injections as potential mal malicious, right? Because if you, if you were to analyze this, this is not really a malicious value. So what it will do is this will be here, it, this is still marked as untrusted in the database. However, after this, this will be marked as a trusted input because this has gone through the filter first. They did not find any malicious input. Uh, they did not find any malicious, uh, like, you know, uh, activity in this. So it, the access filter will mark this as a uh, trusted input. Since those values were marked as trusted in the subsequent request, it will not be filtered or it will not have to go through the check. So now what will happen is, uh, so for example here, now when the, when the browser will send the uh, request again, it will actually decode that value. Rather than us as an attacker have to do anything, browser it itself will decode this value and make a request to the script src attacker.js evil.js script. And then whenever that response will come back, it will actually execute this script. Uh, along with whatever the tags that the page has on. 
So this is the flaw in the Internet Explorer NTC XSS filter. It only looks for the injection that might immediately result in the JavaScript execution. Now, now if you were to take an example, let's say you, you went to the airport, you went past the uh, screening process, and, and once you succeed that, you like you know you, you will be marked as a trusted, and then anywhere, be, like you know, when you reach the gate or, or when you're changing the terminal, etc., you'll not be able, they will not screen you again because you have already gone through the screening and you have already been marked trusted. But in this case, the same scenario we are able to use to bypass the filters uh, rule, which we have seen in the previous video. Now, this is not just an example which would work on the iframe, but it could also work on simple frames. It can also work in the embedded links like subdomains, etc. So whenever there is a there is a place where you can have uh, like you know SRC kind of attribute, you can actually utilize this technique to bypass. So the untrusted data injected in the initial request will be uh, trust will be marked as a trusted, and then we can just use in the subsequent request, and that's how we bypass the uh, NT XSS filter from the Internet Explorer. I hope uh, this explains like one of the technique how uh, like why we need to examine the filter, how we can uh, learn about the bypass techniques, um, and of course like you know you you should be able to like keep trying different techniques, and and someday you might find zero day into one of these filters uh, like everyone does. So hopefully you have you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, feel free to drop down your comment below. Uh, if you have not understood any of this, uh, let me know. I'll try to further simplify this as well. Uh, please hit the thumbs up if you haven't already. Subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you all next Monday. Bye.